welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin MacLeod, Plate Mail Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Buckner. I'm the primary dungeon master for Knights of Roleplay and Adventuring Podcast. As our adventure begins, it is Stardate 1018.82. The party, guided by a magical astrolabe, is on a journey to find an ancient ship called the Spelljammer. The astrolabe has led the party to a distant planet where they found a passage, uh, bleh, passage to a strange alternate dimension in the base of a tree. Once there, they defeated a group of strange creatures with heads like flower buds that opened into toothy petals. After the battle, the party went into Strax's rope trick for a short rest. So, adventurers, how would you like to proceed? Well, if we're done here, I'm just going to stick my head out of the rope trick and see what we got going on around us. <laughs> oh, we got a viewing thing out of the rope trick too, right? Yeah, you, you can see out of it, right? So. Uh, yeah, you can, it's, it's yeah. just a hole in the floor. You can stick your head out. Gotcha. Stick our head out of the hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you see the same sort of dark, yeah. twisted uh, landscape that you saw before when you went in. Mm-hmm. There don't appear to be any creatures in the immediate area. Well, I think they're gone. At least as mm-hmm. far as... Uh, our immediate vicinity. I don't, I mean, I don't think there's anything to do but to keep following where the astrolabe points and see. (laughs) Genius. Let's go. So. Okay. So everybody's done your short rest? Done all your hit dice and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh So you're going to continue to follow the astrolabe... Itchy over there, Sarah. I am for some reason. Oh. And I just got my nails done, so like the polish makes them all dull. Oh. So it's not like satisfying, like itching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, as you continue to follow the astrolabe, we travel for about an hour through the twisted reflection of the forest planet. In the distance, through the dense forest, you see what looks like a wall. As you get closer, it appears to be a translucent barrier of some kind. It rises up past the canopy of the trees and seems to have an ever so slight curvature to it. On the opposite side of the barrier, you see a city full of technology, populated entirely by tall, lanky, blue giants. Most of them are wearing robes, but a handful are wearing armor. You recognize them as the Arcane, the race known for supplying spell jamming equipment to the known universe. You have seen the Arcane on the Rock of Brawl, but behind this barrier, you see no races other than the Arcane. How would you like to proceed? Okay, just to clarify, when you say that the uh, barrier kind of curves away, does it like curve away from us, like it's the dome, or curve towards us, like we're in the dome? Uh, it curves away from you. Like it's the dome, okay. Ever so slightly, yeah. I, I, as you look up, I mean, I mean, you can barely perceive it. If you look up, you can barely perceive mm-hmm. it. there's a little bit of curvature to it. Oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, no. Well, Not I'm... another freaking dome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we should try the civil path. Let's see if we can get somebody's attention if there's a doorway or something. And... Nah, we should hide everybody in the rope trick and then oh, see God. if we can get it to her about it. I think we can make it work this time. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no. <laughs> or we could just go and touch it. Touch I it. touched the dome. <laughs> Uh, who's carrying the astrolabe? I guess I'm carrying the astrolabe because yeah, I got the, t- the bag of holding. Yeah, I got the bag of holding. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so Janie goes up and you touch the dome and it feels kind of smooth like glass. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well. Strax, you touch the dome. I don't want to touch the dome. We've already <laughs> touched the dome. Let's see if we can find a door. <laughs> Give me the astrolabe. No, you'll break it. <laughs> Arvin elbows you and takes the astrolabe. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. 
uh, are you allowing her to do that? Because otherwise, it's a contested <laughs> role. No, I'm keeping the astral head. <laughs> Okay, if you want to make opposed strength checks. <laughs> She's trying to grapple it away from you. <laughs> Can she try to take it away with acrobatics, or is it always strength? Um, it's, we're, we're going to say it's strength. If you have athletics, okay. you, you can use athletics. Okay. All right. Try sure. not to bet a game, because he asked the question. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep. Okay. 23. Janie's got like a plus 29. six arcana. For real? No. <laughs> All right, so, Wait, how, how, do you, so, how do you get what is your how do you do I have a plus six in athletics he said oh a, a, athletics athletics yeah athletics yeah. oh you must be proficient in athletics uh-huh. strength athletics okay because yeah. I'm going to have plus three in athletics <laughs> okay so I mean wrestles the astral lab away from Strax <laughs> Wait, Jamie, you mind? this is a plus six in arcana she would guess that if they made the astral lab, they might it might be a key to this dome I would think. So you give it to Janie? Uh, yes, yeah, Sarvine rolls her eyes at Strax and says, Stop being a punk to your sister, and she hands uh, it off to Janie. Okay. <laughs> okay, so with the astrolabe in hand, does mm-hmm. anything happen if I touch the dome? Uh, you get within a couple feet of the dome with the, ast- with the astrolabe, and you see a tall rectangular door that's 12 feet tall by 6 feet wide. It appears in the dome, allowing you access to the inside. It's only because you knocked. I don't think you knocked. I didn't knock. <laughs> she just touched it. Knocked three times. <laughs> okay, so this is very, very tall door uh, right in front of you in the dome. I think this is the way in, she yeah, says, looking at you. Fine, but do we disdain. actually want to go in? We've never actually had to deal with these people. I don't know what they're like. They may just look at us and say, what are you doing here? And squish us. Is this where the ship is? Well, we know the ship is in that direction. How do we know it's not on the other side? We can walk well, around. if what we want is the <laughs> ship and they made it and it's pointing this way, I think this is where we need to go. You're making a lot of assumptions. And there. plus, the door is very big, so that would lead me to believe that the ship is going to go through it. Well, the door's only Or that it was feet. made for them. The ship is probably bigger than that, but it's made for giant people. No, the, the door is, is 12, 12 feet by 6 feet, Greg. Oh. Yeah. So, so. I, it's about the size of the blue, giant blue people walking around? Oh. Correct. Yeah. I'm, Correct. I'm a, in, in favor of taking the chance with these people. Cause Fine, look what's we? out here. Do you really want more of this? And then, they, they weren't. Yeah. They, were, they were punks. Jeannie we walks no towards the door. <laughs> Arvin follows. Fine, but we be cautious. <laughs> I check for cautious? traps. <laughs> <laughs> the look, the look I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I gave you any kind of a look. <laughs> you I mean, did. Do you really, like, do, do you really, really want to check the traps? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, do a uh, dexterity I'll check. I'll help you. <laughs> do you want to do investigation or, or perception? Perception. Okay. Looking for traps. Oh, wow. So Sandra's dice actually rolled really well. Uh, <laughs> that'd be a dirty 20. <laughs> uh, dirty 20. <laughs> um, given that it's, it seems to be just like a solid piece of some kind of a magical construct, and it's, you know, there, there's nowhere, and it's also just translucent, you don't see any indication whatsoever that there's some kind of a trap there. I didn't think there would be. Is it made uh, out of metal? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. We're going through the door. <laughs> okay, you're going through the door. God. Just like the back door. Jeannie likes the back door. <laughs> well, so as you enter the dome, you see a magical metropolis in front of you. The buildings are made from marble and are beautifully constructed. They all bear carvings and designs that relate to space travel. There are platforms full of arcane floating down marble streets. There are a vast array of passenger vehicles flying through the skies. You see horizontal, translucent disks inside large glass tubes that are transporting groups of arcane to the various levels of tall buildings in the area. Uh, Amidst all this technology, you see parks with beautiful landscaping. An arcane in green and blue robes sees you and approaches with curiosity. They say, Hello, I'm Galmor. Welcome to Tal Melar, City of the Arcane. How did you find your way to our lovely city? Dumb luck. 
What was his name pronounced again? His name is Galmore. G A L M O R E. Galmore. We are on a quest to find something. No, we're not. We just stumbled across this place. I thought it looked cool. Uh, please excuse me for being cautious. It's just that we don't get visitors, especially ones that could find a way to get through the dome. How did you find your way through our magical barrier? It was open. nudges Janie. Show them. No! Oh, they, they built the ships. So what we just trust every Tom, trying? Dick, and Harry that walks up to us. Oh my gosh. Uh, you, you don't know that they built the spell jammer. Okay. But you know that they deal in spell jamming technology, okay. like spell jamming helms in particular. Yeah. How do we? <laughs> Janie looks at her brother and telepathically says, very, very sternly, "You're not allowed to talk." <laughs> I reply back, with this, "How do you know they're just not going to take it?" I don't. You don't mind, <laughs> but you're not allowed to talk. <laughs> you're not allowed to tell me not to. <laughs> We need to show them how it is that we came through the dome, or they're much less likely to trust us. Uh-huh. <laughs> Galmore seems a little confused as Strax and Janie are staring at one another. <laughs> Galmore <laughs> and their banter. Uh. He- hello, Mr. Mr. Kelmore. Hello. My name is Janie. I am very confused as to how we got here, too. We're on a journey. We've been looking for... Something that we've been told is is very valuable and dangerous, and we were led here by an artifact, and she holds out the Mm. astrolabe, and it seems Uh, to have opened, uh, been the key to, to visiting your city, which is very beautiful and grand, and we are quite out of place here, so you will forgive us and my brother for his rudeness. I don't need his forgiveness. That is that is quite all right. Um, I'm just going to take a look at that. If you, if you could just hold it, hold it out for me, please. It, it is very dear to us. Yes, you, you you can hold on to it. Okay. If that allowed you access through the dome, I can only assume that it was created by somebody who is a member of the race of Arcane. And he kind of like he starts to really take a look at it. He doesn't put his hands on it. Um, but he, th- he takes a really strong look at it and kind of puzzles for a minute. He says, yes, I do think that that is constructed using our methods. Uh, where did you get this? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, hidden away in, in a underground temple or something in a cave network on a, on a, on a desert planet. I, I don't actually remember either. We, we oh, right. On, we found it on the desert planet. We found it on, on the planet. Oh, yeah, Arrakis. it was on Arrakis. Oh, right. right. It was on Dune. Yeah, we, 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 <laughs> we lost it. It was on Dune. <laughs> yes, where Captain Braun died, died, yes. Um, on a desert planet at, at great cost to um, us and our friends. Yeah. We have been hunted in, in, in our attempts to keep it out of the wrong hands, and we have been told that it is the key to finding something that could very well be from the technologies that your people have, have brought to the universe. I should give him a key to the forge while you're at it. Can Please you... forgive my brother. He's very angry <laughs> and about life. And protective. And very protective of our knowledge and our secrets. He's very nervous about the wrong people knowing what we know. Uh... He turns to you and says, uh, I, I admire your desire for caution and prudence, but there is no threat to you here, none that I am aware of. So you say? Yes, so I do. Hmm. And can you tell me, he turns to Janie and says, can you tell me more about what this astrolabe is meant to find? I don't believe I told you what it was called yet. You didn't say, you didn't say <laughs> astrolabe? She didn't. She, she called, called it, it artifact. artifact. Okay, that was that wasn't on purpose. Okay, he says okay. artifact. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah. I, I, thought, right. I thought. So you, you were being that. shady on purpose. No, no, no. Okay. no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. He asked you about about the the artifact, since that's how you referred to it. 
We have been told that the artifact is to lead to a, sh a ship of great power. The ship of all ships, if you will. He kind of thinks for a second. Are you referring to the Spelljammer? Yes. Hmm. I, At this point, you might as well just tell him. <laughs> well, I just did. Just did. <laughs> I was not aware that there was a way to locate it. You're saying that this is leading you to it? So far this has brought us through the through the skies and brought the, us to this planet and through the tree through the tree and through the <laughs> darkness to right to you. This is well, maybe very, not you specifically, but yes, this uh, I find this to be very very fascinating. Fascinating. Can you <laughs> perhaps describe the architecture of the location where you found it? Um, it was a temple that had many carvings and inscriptions that depicted different types of ships. And yes, there was like yeah. trees and other different. Glyphs that uh, none of which helped us. The hieroglyphics, yes. and, then and when you aligned them, they would take, take you, you to places different places. And, yes, yeah. in some cases, multiple. they were transportation modes, and it, it was a very civilized culture for being underground in the desert. Wipe your nose off. When we finally found it, <laughs> it was uh, sort of but... encased in a protective orb. We, I see. It was necessary to get it out. Because Due to our circumstances at the time, which are not too different from our circumstances now, come to think of it, uh, but in a sort of myst magical well, I guess you could call it. I see. And you said that you've been in some sort of danger as you were pursuing the spell jammer. We are being hunted. Yeah, we're not the only ones uh, coming for us. The mm. Illithids have decided that they want it too, and so we decided that Illithids, yeah, specifically the brain suckers, the Illithid, the Illithid race want the Empire, spell jammer. An organization. We didn't set out to find the spell jammer. At this point, we're only looking for it because we're afraid of it falling into the wrong hands. This Illithid Empire took someone very dear to us in their quest for power, and we're fearful for the rest of the galaxy for what might happen if they were to get too much of it. And they will stop at nothing, it would seem. Certainly not the destruction of innocent lives. Oh, that is somewhat disturbing. I, I am not aware of a elephant empire. I am aware of the race, of course. Um, but I do not believe that they would be able to follow you into this place. We chose this place to put our city in when our son was going to go supernova and we needed a place to hide, so we chose this dimension. People do not often come here. When they do, they do not often survive. We thought this would be a safe place. <laughs> not from us. <laughs> Perhaps. Please excuse my brother. You keep saying that. I don't need them to excuse me. In, in her mind, she simply says, you're being very rude. <laughs> so. And you can see the fire in her eyes. <laughs> um, so G Galmar says, <laughs> well, this is, this is very, very fascinating to me. I'm very interested in this. I do believe that it is a member of our species who created this artifact that led you here. Uh, somehow, this member of our race was able to apparently find a way to home in on this most ancient of spell jamming vessels. We have a, a ruling council made up of 12 members of the Arcane. I would imagine that they would want to speak with you about this. I'm sure they would. I am not, I am not trying to force your hand. Um, Arcane are the only race that are here. You will stand out 
and you can all see already that there are people in the streets who are staring at this conversation. Yes. There are all these people that are passing I can by. imagine. Who are just, like, curious about a, these A about bunch these of non-arcane, like, yeah. tiny people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're somehow in there. Um, so, and you do see that there's, like, there's a couple, there's a couple of pairs of arcane that are wearing armor that are kind of standing off and, and keeping an eye. They don't seem to be aggressive. Um, they, they don't even... Need to be. <laughs> they, they, they don't actually have any weapons that you can see um, but they're they have like like breastplate and they have um, like like greaves and they have like pauldrons it, it's not like a full suit of armor it almost seems like it's more like for show mm-hmm. than anything they don't really seem like they're warriors but they seem like they're trying it's, to it's like a badge of station but kind of yeah station, yeah something like that, yeah. yes so you know or a, or a uniform yeah maybe, maybe it's something in their society it gives them some kind of uh, stature stature or something like that yeah um but nonetheless, I mean, there there is a small crowd that's gathering, but they're sort of keeping their distance. Mm-hmm. And um, Galmore, yes, Galmore. correct. Galmore. Yeah, and and Galmore says, um, "I I would offer to be your escort, so that you are at least not traveling by yourselves. You will probably get questioned by countless members of my species if you are not um, being escorted by someone. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe would you have a desire to speak?" With the council, I don't want to force your hand, but I don't. I don't know that it's prudent to let you just roam the city either. I think that would be wise. I mean, my, my instinct, no matter how well protected you think this location is, is if we found it, the, the being the, the organization that's pursuing us and, and their leader, who is something of a unique individual himself, the, they're extremely dangerous. And if we found this place, they could pose a danger to your people yeah. too. He's part machine, part organic, if we're being honest. His name is Zaxos. I don't know if that name no, holds anything. No, that, no, that, that yeah. does not. But if, if you got through the dome with this artifact, uh, I don't imagine that even if you were followed that someone could get through our dome. It is very strong and very powerful. I hope that's the case, but he commands a fleet of hundreds of ships. His goal is to conquer... The, the galaxy. Mm-hmm. So. He does have a lot of power. Power. Well, I certainly but. wouldn't want the spelljammer to fall into the hands of someone like that. Yeah. Well, Galmar, you, yeah, so we've kind of told you why we're here. Mm-hmm. Who are you, and what do you do here? Let the damn check his notes. <laughs> <laughs> pause for a pause. Question. Good call. Good call. Uh, <laughs> let's see. He says, "Glasses." <laughs> He says, I am the head of the transportation division. Mm. I oversee the construction and maintenance of public transportation. And he points out he points out some of like the um, the 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 platforms that have like dozens of hurricane on them and just moving down. Local transportation? Correct. Yes. So not actual spell jamming vessels, just yeah. No. These platforms and ships coming through here. Correct, yes. Correct. So that wouldn't put you on the council. No, I am not a member of the council. Mm. So he says to you, uh, I live in the Zonda district, and this is, you are standing in the Darna district right now. The the council um, is not far if you would like to speak with them. Uh, I mean, I would recommend that you speak with them, although I don't want to force you to, but... In your opinion, what would this council do if they suddenly found themselves in possession of an artifact that could locate what is obviously a ship that you yourselves seem to want to actually have? Well, we don't know who created the Spelljammer. In all of our history, we have no record of any individual or any group that is associated with our species that created the Spelljammer itself. So it sounds like it's probably something that you would want for no other reason than to study. I think that the council would be very curious. They They may ask you for the artifact and they may want to locate it and find it and study it. I I don't know that they would forcibly take the artifact from you but 
I, I, I can't say for certain. I, I would not want to talk ill of the council, but I don't know what the individual people on the council, some are more strong-willed than others. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to advise you. I mean, you may want to approach with caution if you don't want to go see the council, if you want to try to follow the astrolabe without seeking them, I would just ask that you, again, allow me to escort you. So whether it's to the council chamber or whether it's to simply follow the astrolabe, I will try to guide you in either regard. And I, and I really, I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. I don't know what the council would do. No, I, I think you kind of gave me a does, pretty rough idea. Does this rough council idea. have control or access to any armies or technology that could protect things out at the surface of this planet? Because oh, big our, ass dome. Our well, our ship mm-hmm. is out, out there, and they could be in danger. Speaking of, have, are you still able to get in touch with them? Um, I'll press my communicator and say, Hal, are you able to hear me? There's no response. Okay, so... Uh, I was kind of afraid of that. Um, so... I, I mean, you technically are in another dimension, so it doesn't seem to cross dimensional barriers. Speaking to them may have some merit, okay. because we could use allies in this venture. If we find the ship, you know, to hope that we, the five of us, the seven of us can... Six of us can keep control of it, <laughs> map, uh, and maintain it, and understand it, on our own. Yes, but in if the they face decide, of an army. Yes, but they, as you say, they have an army. They have strength. If they decide that they want the astrolabe, are you going to keep it from them? At least they're not trying to conquer the entire galaxy yet. I mean, if if I were to think of people who I'd prefer to help us in the safekeeping of this, it would be them. We're mm, reading an awful lot into their intentions. And I think you are also, Strax. I understand your concern, but... I'm trying to avoid their intentions, whatever they may be. And just like uh, Arvine said, they may be a great ally to us. And, so or a great enemy, yeah. Even you have questionable intentions sometimes, brother. Ouch. I think <laughs> <laughs> that we might need to choose our battles based on who we know is bad. Yeah, well, my questionable intentions generally don't lead to the destruction of the of the known universe. <laughs> Deliberately. <laughs> for, for the listeners at home, I just gave him the really look. <laughs> kind of turn to... to Galmore and say, who among your people is responsible for I guess creating and outfitting other spell jamming ships out to the universe as a whole because this army that is conquering and destroying and chasing us I mean they have a fleet of ships where did they get them? That's actually not a bad idea. If we can talk to that person we can get a better idea of their intentions before going to this council. At least it's easier to run away from one person than twelve. Well, the arcane do not exclusively produce spell jamming vessels for races. They construct um, their own from technology that we give them. Uh, sorry, honey. What, what was your? I, I was trying to ask, like, if, if we could confirm whether these this fleet of hundreds of illithid ships was mm-hmm. made. By someone in their society or not? Oh no, no, yeah. He, the, the answer I said stands. It, it, it's like they they make their own ships by and large from from their technology. The arcane made the technology, not the physical ships. Yeah, the, 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 it's they, yeah, not the, like they're okay. the port that makes Correct. the ship. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there isn't like a shipyard that they. They're just produce the scientists the ships out of. that make the technologies that make the ships yep. work. Yep. I'm, I'm of the mindset that we speak to the council of nothing else but to ask if there's any way that they can grant protection to our friends on the surface. I say telepathically to each of them individually, worst case scenario, we start a fight and run. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, Kate, that that you're in another dimension and you came through a little hole in a tree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know they're 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 hiding in here in this giant magical dome, For in this reason. in this horrible plane. Um, I mean, you can certainly ask anything you want, but I'm just mm-hmm. telling you that it's not like they're 
on the surface of the planet or something, and okay. you're below the I mean you're below the surface okay. of the planet. It's not actually you're in, in another okay. dimension. Okay, all right. So, yeah. so it's not that easily was found. Very well hidden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they he legit just told us that they're tucked away somewhere where they're hoping no one will ever find them. <laughs> Correct. And yet, and that's did. why everybody's like staring at us because they're like, "How the f did these?" things get down here. Exactly. Well, at least we covered our tracks a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still right? blue, so... Yeah, am I, am I, I might okay. not yeah, stand I mean, out I mean, they, so much. Uh, they mm-hmm. came here for safety to get away so nobody could find them, and there's a bunch of people here who are not arcane who somehow found them. I still think mm-hmm. that we should warn them. But I'm only seven foot tall, so I, I'm not quite mm-hmm. as tall. Yeah, you don't so. quite make the mark. So, no. so Galmar starts to... He says, excuse me, and he starts to go around, and he goes over to the people in the armor... And you don't quite hear what he what what he's saying, um, but they kind of you see some heads nodding and you see some body language that is not um, negative hostile. in any way. Yeah, it's not hostile, and and basically the the arcane sort of start to go about their business. I mean, people are still rubbernecking and kind of paying mm-hmm. attention, but Galmore seems to basically be like, everything is fine. We're all fine here. How are you? Like mm-hmm. they're not a threat. Right. Okay. There's right. nothing to see here. So, so people start Carry to kind on. of disperse a little bit, but there's still a lot of rubbernecking. <laughs> Okay. Are any of them made out of metal? Jeez. No. They've got metal armor. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can I cast, like, shut the F up on you? Uh, whole yeah, person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do have a whole person. <laughs> but there's not such a thing as hold mouth. <laughs> no, if you're paralyzed, you're paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> Mind sliver? <laughs> maybe, maybe something I can do with. Pre- you should make a, You should make up a spell. <laughs> you should make up a spell. Shut the f up. <laughs> can I use that as a rule of cool? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Galmore comes back after he's kind of quiet, quieted mute. the crowd down, and uh, and he and he says, um, "We can proceed. However you, you, however you decide, you would like to proceed." <laughs> I would vote that we give the council a chance. All right, well, give me the astral and I'll put it back in the bag. Bag's the best place for it. <laughs> Janie hands over the astral okay. I, get, I hand over the astral with my eyes rolling so hard. <laughs> <laughs> they nearly roll out of my head. <laughs> okay. So and you, you guys want to have him take you to the council? Yes. Okay. I believe we have made the decision to see the council. Okay. Yes. Along the way, I see if I can find a decent-sized rock. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, there is a park not too far from where you are where you could probably go and grab a rock, yes. Well, it doesn't, well, it doesn't have to be a rock. It's just something innocuous. Um, again, the city and the buildings, everything seems to be largely constructed of marble. As far mm-hmm. as the architecture goes, there right, are I find a of, giant marble. There are lots of machines okay. <laughs> around that are made of a combination of metal and, and other objects, mm-hmm. and obviously imbued with heavy magic. Can mm-hmm. I use predis- uh, prestidigitation? <laughs> prestidigitation. <laughs> 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 to make something look like the astrolabe, just in case. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, what? Oh, I need minor illusion. Yeah. Use, like a minor illusion. Well, the prestidigitation make does like minor illusionary effects. There is a spell called minor illusion yeah. that will probably take care of that. Um, <laughs> cast it on something to make it look like the astrolabe in case they try to take it. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> Can you not just like use a coin or something? What is it you're trying to do? He doesn't want to tell us because <laughs> he doesn't want to kill him. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I, I would say, like, do you have any objects on your person that you could use for this purpose? Um, actually, that's a good question, maybe. Something <laughs> mm, big enough. Hit it with a rock. Use SD01. Uh, uh, he knows this Drax is up to something. So um, while John's looking that up, uh, passive perceptions, I just want to make sure. Uh, Janie, you have a 13. Yep, still. Uh, Arvine, you're at 22, right? Uh, yes. Sure. Uh, Strax is 14. Uh, yeah. And Matisse, you're at 13? Yes, I'm dumb as a rock. Freaking roads. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, as you guys start to move through the city, um, Arvine, you do see that there are a pair of the, arc- the arcane that are in the robes who are 
hanging far enough back that you're not sure if they're trying to hide the fact that they're following you or not. Okay. Because it's obvious to you that they're following you. Okay. It doesn't look like they're like, they're not like going from like cart to cart and jumping around and like trying to be stealthy, but you're pretty sure that they are following you. Okay. <laughs> All right, they're being kind of steps in closer to, to Galmar and says, uh, who are your robed friends? About 50 feet back. Um, I'm not going to uh, look over my shoulder if you're afraid that they're following us with ill intent, but I, I probably wouldn't even know who they are by sight. If you want, I can look over my shoulder. Um, I'll just monitor. We're okay for now. Very well. I, I don't know that anybody would try to harm you. Okay. Um, I'm the only one who knows why you're really here. I did not share that with anyone. Okay. But we are a curiosity. You are. And if we're being watched, <laughs> that's, uh... <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Irvine's not concerned yet. She's just aware. It, it could simply yeah. be curiosity. Yeah. Janie kind of always walks with a little bit of a weird swagger in her step anyway, so she might, like, start, like, walking weird and, like, walk backwards and to get a better look at them. Um, and then she will um, start speaking to Galmore telepathically Mm -hmm. and give him a very good description of the visual of those individuals. Okay. Would that help him decipher who they are? So so when you speak in his mind, um, his face kind of lights up for a second. I mean, he, he heard your voice when you were actually speaking, so he recognizes that it's your voice in his mind. Well, the first thing she'll say is, please don't be alarmed. I have this ability. Right, but he's still a little shocked. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's, he's still, still a little shocked. Please don't be alarmed. Everybody I'm going to be alarmed. Everybody always looks alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> I have this ability, and I, in doing this, I will give you the ability to speak back. I want to describe these people to you so that we might be able to see if you know who they are. Okay. I mean, he, he speaks back, and, and he says... Uh, this is really a wonderful ability that you have. Uh, yes, please describe it. I mean, it seems almost like, like a little kid. Like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's still maintaining his composure. Like, but he, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, he, he thinks it's pretty cool. Um, so, so you describe them, um, and uh, he says that it's that it's one of it, it's it's. He doesn't know who they are, but he thinks he maybe he saw them in the crowd of onlookers. But they weren't, they weren't one of the pairs of, of uh, armed people that he was speaking to when he was trying to calm everybody down. Mm-hmm. Um, so he doesn't really know who they are. Their color of robe doesn't distinct, like... Not, not particularly. There's, okay. there, there's, no, um, there's, there's no, like, heraldry or anything on, on, on them that, okay. he, that he would recognize. Okay. Cool. Oops. But, I mean... It was he, just a thought, yeah. something she can do. Yeah, that I mean, nobody else can. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he he's uh, he says to you, Arvin. He says, "I'm uh, impressed with your skills of observation. Uh, let me know if somehow they seem to be taking the uh, aggressive body language. I suppose. Oh well. Again, my my people, I would say, as a whole, uh, don't tend toward violence, but this is a very strange occurrence." Again, we came here for privacy, mm-hmm. and people might possibly react with a great deal of concern. Mm. And I imagine it's nothing more than that. Mm. But but please keep an eye on them. Yeah. And Arvin kind of taps her head and looks at Janie. Mm-hmm. And, and once you establish the connection, she she thinks... Uh, can, <laughs> establish the connection. Can you or, or your brother... <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Beep. Janie? Janie to Arvine. Janie to Arvine. Come in, Arvine. Buffering. Buffering. From your your vantage or your brothers, do either of you have the skill to determine if there's something about our followers? uh, Are they not what they seem? Um, I don't have the ability to detect magic, but I can ask my brother if he has anything 
to determine if there's illusions on them or something, a glamour, as it were. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, <laughs> like, to see if maybe they're, like, an illithid in disguise. Oh, yeah. If they're controlled, um, yes. I break connection with Arvine <laughs> and connect with, hey, ass face. <laughs> Axel Strax. <laughs> ass face. I don't know if you've noticed the murmurings going on up here, but um, we're, we have a couple of lingerings in the back uh, following us. Uh, Galmore is not familiar with who they are, um, but Arvine is concerned that they might be people in the skies. Is there a way that you could use detect magic to make sure that they're not like <laughs> robots, robots in disguise? In disguise? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, maybe <laughs> to see if they're. I mean, to just to make sure they're not like under a glamour or anything. Of course, this is all in like Jamie kind of speak, but you know, I guess yeah. When I'm talking in minds, I talk at Sarah. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, now you need my help. All right, I'll see what I can see. Uh, well, hey, you've um, been an ass face all afternoon, so. Well, somebody has to be. Uh, <laughs> if not me, then who? <laughs> <laughs> but mostly you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Grover. What, what was his name? Galmore. 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 Grover. <laughs> About. Eh. Good question. Uh, about how far away is this council? I mean, but how long is it going to take us to get there? Uh, maybe another five minutes. Uh, I'd say it's maybe um, four blocks away from here. Okay. Well, it doesn't take five minutes. To answer your there. question is no. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. If well. they continue to follow us in. Hmm. I'll see. The idea is out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you guys, you know, you keep following Galmore through the streets and everywhere Jane you go. Jane continues to do her weird gallivanting yep. to cover up the fact that she was, like, skipping backwards. And, like, yep. I mean, yeah. I, I, everywhere you go, people like, people keep rubbernecking. And then every once in a while, Galmore will stop and talk to some people. Sometimes they are just in regular robes. Sometimes they're wearing the robes with the armor. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever he, whenever he seems to see somebody who looks um, a little more fearful rather than just curious... It seems like he immediately kind of goes over and tries to calm them and let them know that everything is fine. So, I mean, he's doing a really good job. You can st- you can tell he's he's um, he's making an effort to try to make sure that his people are not afraid. And there are some people who are obviously more scared than curious, and he's trying very hard to calm people. And you can tell that he's uh, he can't wait till we finally till you finally get to the council <laughs> because then to be indoors. And then he, you think he's going to have a little sense of relief once you actually get off the street. So um, you eventually get to this building, this very tall building with a big open archway in the front. Okay. I'm still thinking of oh, that sorry. thing that I'm trying oh, okay. to do here. All right, so you're, you're almost <laughs> to the um, council chamber building. Uh, John is johnning. Five. John's going to john a little bit here. Five and three quarters. <laughs> five and seven eighths. Five and fifteen sixteenths. <laughs> okay, so um, you do you want to jump? Um, do you want to do the first part when you round a corner? Is that what we're doing, uh, or are you just doing the first part in general? Just doing the first part uh, in general, since it's going to take a while to do the second okay. part anyway. Go ahead and do the first part. Dice don't fail me now. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. That beats most passives. It does. Um, Not yours, obviously. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, uh, so, so you want to tell her what she sees? <laughs> uh, you see me um, pretend to put the astrolabe into the bag of holding, but instead slip it into my coat pocket. And that, and okay. that's, and that's it for now, right? That's that's the only part I of it. I thought you had already right put now. it away. Into the bag of holding. That was yeah. yes. <laughs> You had already put the astrolabe into. I think he's referring Don't get caught to up back, in... back when he put it. Okay. Uh, Don't get caught oh, up okay. This is yes. the timing. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he's right. pulling a sleight of handery. Okay. He's retconning. Okay. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Just a little right. bit. It's only because That's the fine. story progressed while I was trying to figure all those out. Okay. Yeah, it's totally fine. So he's shenanigating. So back when he put the astrolabe away, he really. You noticed that he didn't put it in the bag of holding. He put it in his coat pocket. 
Correct. Shenanigate. Okay. Eight. Moving kind of raises Am I understanding that correctly? Correct. Even yes. though she, my character doesn't know this? Correct. Shenanigan. Okay. She would take note, and that doesn't seem quite okay. normal, but she's not alarmed yet. Gonna okay. call you out on mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Um, so then the second part. Okay. Yeah. It, w- it would probably be easiest to wait until you get somewhere where you can sit and complete that part. <laughs> um, do you want to try to do it can while I you're walking? It? I don't. I don't see any reason why I couldn't do it while we're walking. No, you could. You could. It's just that, like you don't know. Like if you're around a corner and you and you mm-hmm. start working, like whether or not the people behind you might see by the time you get back. I mean, you don't think the people well, behind I'm, you. Well, a minute long missing. casting. I'm not. I'm not going to be able to hide that from whoever's no. watching. No. I'm, I'm not even going to try. Okay. So so at some point in the middle of the walk, you start casting. Yeah. Okay. What does our and see? Um, well, all of you, because I'm not trying to hide this one. Yeah, um, everybody you just, you just see me pull a hammer out, um, and I just start casting a spell on it. And after about a minute, um, it suddenly sprouts arms and legs. Okay. Um, <laughs> and my and, it, and it just kind of pop, <laughs> yeah, and it just hops down onto the ground and starts following us. Okay. Sort of like the mono drone. Mm-hmm. Like your little bird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just it's, like it's just a little walking hammer. Yep. Okay. One of those little little, little constructs. Sure. See if anybody comments on it. Um, you see a couple of people that are rubbernecking, kind of look down, and, and, and they seem curious. They're kind of pointing and, okay. and, and, and like, smiling. Um, That's good. That means that these people aren't magically steeped in the same way as that we are. That this is an unusual, something unusual. No, I, I mean, there, there are constructs that you've seen on the mm-hmm. streets. So... No. Constructs are not uncommon. Right. <laughs> Probably more sophisticated on their <laughs> <laughs> their culture than ours. Yeah, they they, they have some um, they have some constructs that are that look to be very large for like construction projects and things like that, and then there are smaller ones that are more utility based. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you haven't seen any as small as one that you're using right yeah. now, but. <laughs> So it's just like, oh, that's so adorable. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so then you, you're approaching the, the, the council chamber building. Okay. And um, unless you tell me otherwise, you know, Galmore will lead you inside. Okay. As we step through the doorways, um, I... Uh, <clears throat> see, I hit my... Um, this I am going to try to do circumspectly. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, we'll, we'll do another as sleight best, of hand. As best, as best possible. Okay. Um, I give the bag of holding to the little tiny servant, and uh, he's already got his instructions, so off we should go. Okay, I don't know that you could hide that at all. <laughs> um, but but, but you, give the, you give the instructions and... Um, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, be, nonchal- be casual about it. Okay. And he'll and so he'll it's, it's, it's not hiding the concert. No, it is design. hiding. Oh, it is hiding. It's okay. gonna have to. It's, it's instructions. It's instructions are to go and hide until it sees us. Until it sees us come back. Okay. So you have to have it make a stealth check. So, so you guys see, Strax give the bag of holding, to the construct, and then it has to make a, a stealth check. A stealth check. Okay. Yep. Which, I think it has a plus three on that. So dice do not fail me again. Now. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay. Dirty. <laughs> um, so you're pretty sure that it's still in the building. Mm-hmm. You see it sort of like start to walk off toward like a hallway or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are a variety of different um, sculptures and paintings and mechanical mm-hmm. devices that you're not sure what the nature of them are. <laughs> um, but you try to look around to see where it goes and you've kind of lost sight of it. I mean, you all saw this happen. But then mm-hmm. when the construct moved off with the bag, it seems to have uh, disappeared out of sight. I mean, you, you, you start like, kind of trying to track it. You're like, I know it went in that direction, mm-hmm. but it, it's, it's hiding very well. <laughs> Great. Um, so Galmore, who is leading at the front of the group, mm-hmm. um, didn't actually catch any of that. He's okay. still kind of leading you forward. Okay. Irving kind of nudges Janie. She looks at Strax and telepathically goes, what the hell did you just do? Insurance. So, so Galmore splits off and basically talks to a person at a front desk and kind of leaves the two of you 
uh, leaves your group alone for a moment while talking to somebody at our front desk. What are exactly are you doing? Just hedging my bets. Okay. And you risk angering people's tracks for no apparent reason. They would be angry about this unless they make an issue of it first. We hear the little hammer guy yowling in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> It's not making any noise. It's being pretty stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds an awful lot like a guy goes. <laughs> I don't understand why you can't just trust us. I trust you. I don't trust them yet. <laughs> Um, so Galmore comes back from talking at the front desk and uh, he says apparently the council is not in chambers today Hmm. Um, there is an individual who is a member of the council who could speak with you who is currently here in the office there's always at least one member of the council in the building uh, the council as a whole is not here, though. Would you like to speak with a representative? Well, we came all this way. We might as well. Mm-hmm. Very well. Galmore goes back to the front desk person, and um, the, front, the front desk pers- person sort of points down this hallway, and then Galmore says, please follow me. So you go down, go down this long hallway, um, you go into a room where there's there's an open doorway, and you walk inside and and you see another arcane uh, sitting at a desk. Um, this arcane is wearing this individual is wearing uh, robes that do have a very small amount of armor on it. It's mostly just a, a, a breastplate and pauldrons, and that's really about it. Um, and they see the group come in, and and this arcane immediately has a look of surprise to see non-arcane walking into the office (laughs) (laughs) and um, stands up and says what what is happening (laughs) who who are these people he he seems a little bit alarmed and and Galmer says please please it is they, they have a device that was made by one of our own that allowed them entrance through and he's like, what do, you, what do you mean not allowed them entrance through? And Galmar continues to try to calm this man down. <laughs> and, and eventually he, he does calm him down and he kind of explains the situation. He talks about the, the artifact. You haven't said astrolabe yet. At least not, <laughs> at least not the Galmar. Um, and basically he explains what your intentions are that, that you just wanted, that, 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 that you all thought it was important that somebody from the council or that the council um, speak up to them about them. So, so this particular individual kind of calms down, and uh, Galmor says, um, "This is uh, Representative Naman from the council." And he kind of turns. He says, "Naman, um, these are my new friends." <laughs> Janie attempts to curtsy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Badly. <laughs> Arvin bows her head respectfully. So does Matisse. Okay. Strax grunts. <laughs> Which is not unexpected. We are the least classy. Nuan <laughs> <laughs> uh, says, uh, uh, "Please, please excuse my um, my alarm. We, we we came here for secrecy, and suddenly a bunch of outsiders walk into my office and." And I was concerned about our security. I didn't know if this was some kind of an invasion. And I, 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 I apologize. Um, but Galmar has explained the situation. Um, may I take a look at this artifact? What would you do with it if you had it? Verify that it is of the arcane. You already did. Harvey and Locke size with Janie. And... Oh. <laughs> Thanks to her, your dummy brother hid it in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
been. <laughs> <laughs> Dummy brother. <laughs> <laughs> dummy mummy. <laughs> His dummy mummy. You you must excuse my brother, sir. I've been making excuses for him all day. And I'm not telling you you need to. We may uh, look very different, <laughs> but we come from a culture that is very untrusting. I'm sure you understand, based on the fact that you ran to a place to be very protected from the world, that trusting outsiders is very troublesome for some. You're... Stop, I'm trying to actually convince him not to hate you. (laughs) I don't care if he hates me later. Look, I can describe the artifact to you, but I haven't got it right now. <laughs> Sorry, I was giving John the hand. <laughs> In I our normally... travels here, I'm pretty sure that my brother tucked the artifact away for safekeeping because he's afraid that someone will try to steal it from us. Well, I I suppose I can understand you being cautious. He kind of just nods to you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could please try to describe it in as much detail as possible. That I can do. So, so you give him a description. I will give him an actually accurate, accurate as dis- accurate a description as, as I can manage. Okay. Um, uh, Naman says, it, it definitely sounds like it is of arcane construction, and I think maybe it dates back more than... A couple thousand years, based on my history, you see, he's like he's straining in his head. He's mm-hmm. really trying to think of of like um, his his uh, his. He's trying to delve into his memories, and he says, mm-hmm. I, "I think this this has to be at least a couple thousand years old." But mm-hmm. I'm I'm a little concerned that some member of our race constructed this in private, didn't share it with the council. And then somehow it got out into the universe and led people, no offense, to come through and find us where we are trying to hide from, from the world. Well, we described the temple where we found it to your comrade. We were unsure as to the construction of the place where it was hidden. Can, if we describe the temple, does... Yeah, you, 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 you and Galmar describe what, it, what it's like. And, and again, uh, Niman says, um, yes, it, it is absolutely constructed by someone from the arcane. Yeah. Um, we actually saw that. I remember mm. Matisse used her memory. Mm. My friend oh, has right. some yeah, yeah, of seeing in the past. She saw times, yeah. visions of arcane fleeing that temple. Um, it right, was under attack by that. other creatures native to that crazy planet. Wait, wait, hold on. Right, didn't it? Wasn't weren't there sandworms attacking when they fled? But I don't think okay. I don't. Were they arcane? No, we did see. I, 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 he saw okay, the arcane. So, yeah. Chris, the DM, is trying right. to remember that. Like, you guys went to the Drow Temple. We did. Mm-hmm. Matisse saw the Drow being this, being attacked by a pit fiend or no. whatever creature that was. Right. This um, wasn't at the this drow was, temple. This was on this Arrakis. Was on Arrakis. Right, right. In the cave network of Arrakis, Matisse used her memory of a thousand lifetimes and saw Arcane fleeing the tunnel in the right direction that we learned we had to go in. And the Arcane were fleeing it because I believe sandworms were attacking. Okay. Yes, that that does yeah. sound familiar to yep. me, to Chris the DM. <laughs> okay. Sorry, case um, memory. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I mean, Matisse has used that a couple of times, and I was like, yeah. were they getting attacked? Like I was, I wasn't sure how I had written it, but yeah. um, but I, but I, but I trust are, you. Consult I mean, the I, campaign I mean, journal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, talk about that, it. Yeah. that's that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, Would the astrolabe have? Are, initi- are you talking in character? No, I'm talking as myself. Okay. Yeah. Would that have um, generated any memories for her if she had held it? No. Okay. Because no. it's not a location. It's, it, yeah, that the astrolabe itself is not a location. Um, How long ago was the council formed? 
the council has been in operation for tens of thousands of years. It has been our way of um, this jurisprudence in modern terms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, it has been our way of 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 ruling um, and of, of decision making in the best interest of our people for for many many thousands of years. Have you been on it this whole time? No. He doesn't no. look 10,000 years old, brother. I don't go by appearances no, anymore. Our, 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 uh, our race tends to live perhaps 100, 150 years. Uh, okay. Wow. This is just knowledge. I mean, I, I, I study history to some degree. Mm. And, and some of what you say is very intriguing because it does sound like things that, that were constructed, um, again, perhaps a couple thousand years ago. Well, let's see if he can riddle me this. I will do and my best. Hopefully, I am not uncovering a, a, a DM plot hole. Um, <laughs> and some of my own research into uh, this astrolabe, I've come across uh, stories of other people finding it or using the astrolabe to find the spelljammer. Obviously, by your reaction, I'm going to assume that they never actually came here. So forgive the DM again, but did I actually say that? I seem to recall you saying that there were oh. legends of other people finding the spell jammer. The spell jammer. Trying to find not the, the spell astrolabe. Not the astrolabe. In fact, the, the Oracle of Fire didn't know, Medicaid says, that we had the astrolabe. We actually kept it because the Oracle of Fire said that he did not know of any way that existed to mm. find the spell jammer. Yes, that, that, I remember that. People have found the spell jammer. Okay, yeah. but so yeah. revised question: Other people have found the spell jammer that this astrolabe brings us to. I assume, but they obviously never came here. So why did the? Which means the spell jammer is not here. So why did it lead us here? I have absolutely no idea. Hmm. I would be very curious to find out. I didn't even think that it wasn't here. Well, maybe it's been here like all make an along inside and check people up. don't know. Yeah, it. make an inside check. Maybe there are multiple ways in and out of this 22. dimension to get there. 22. Mm. Um, you, you get a sense that that the, that Naman's um, study of history mm. is, th- this is very fascinating to him. Mm. This is piquing his interest. And... Um, that's really all you get from him with your inside is that is that he is genuinely curious. You don't okay. detect any subterfuge or any weird stuff going on with him. Okay. Doesn't seem like he's hiding anything. I mean, he really wants to know. I mean, your question that you just asked, mm-hmm. he is just as curious about that as you are. <laughs> like, why did it come here? It's, it's obvious ba- based on his body language and everything that that the spell jammer isn't here as far as he knows. The, the, this is a place where they hid away. Mm-hmm. And they don't have the spell jammer, <laughs> so he's like, he's like, why did this thing lead you here? He's just as so curious as you are. Mm. Matisse asks, has this place ever seen any wars or any other kind of um, strife that might be the reasoning behind why you're so uh, protective of yourselves? There, there has been no war since since we came here. Since since our son went Nova and we um, repopulated to this to this dimension, we have been safe and we have never had any visitors until now. How long ago was that, roughly? We have been here for about eight thousand years, I believe. Okay. So, okay, and out of character. Uh, mm-hmm. In my previous studies, would you say it's been less than 8,000 years since people have found the spell drummer? Um, I can make a history check for that if you want me to. Uh, or well, if you, you just, just need to decide. He <laughs> just told us that it was probably about 2,000 years ago that those caves were built. Mm. Good point. Right. And that the astrolabe is probably about 2,000 years old based on the technology that we described. Okay. Right. So, But what you already know in addition to that Mm-hmm. Is that all throughout history, the spell jammer seems to appear and, and, and then disappear. disappear? So it's probably going between dimensions. And, it, it could be, it could be and like sometimes there are actual civilizations living on it, like races of people living on it, and other times there's it's rumored that it is basically just 
drifting and there's nobody on it. I mean, it's all shrouded with all this mystery and nobody knows any mm -hmm. facts. Um, and sometimes people think that it's been destroyed. And then, like, centuries later, it suddenly appears in some other part of the galaxy. And they're like, wait, wasn't that destroyed? <laughs> so it, it's really, it's, it's very, very shrouded in mystery. It's like Noah's Ark. I mean, s since before that 2,000 years, it was found many times. During the last 2,000 years, it's been found many times. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps, seems to just keep coming and going in the galaxy. Okay, and just to reiterate, the uh, arcane did not make, build this spell jammer, but they've just copied some of its te technology. Correct. That is essentially correct, yes. Which means at one point the arcane had to have found it. Or maybe some part of it. Hmm. Or, or maybe they were on it. I mean, right. you have no idea. They could have been a population that lived there at some point thousands of years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody knows how old the Spelljammer is. Um, mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, the Arcane have been building Spelljamming technology for, for thousands thousands of years. Then maybe it's time to ask the question. So, like, like where, where did they... Get the Spelljamming technology. Right, or, 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 like, or, like, how did they develop the technology? What do they know? Or, or like, you know, did, did, did somebody take the technology from them and make the Spelljammer? Or, like, the, the chick chicken or the Which egg? Came <laughs> Which came first? Which came first? The well, spell jammer or the arcane's knowledge of it? <laughs> seems to me we found the person, per the perf the person perfect, uh, the, the, the perfect person to ask the question. Are there question. any records in your historical archives about the spell jammer ship and its appearances, or do you record that type of history? Uh, he says that he does, and he basically tells you everything that we just discussed. Mm -hmm. about it appearing and reappearing, all the stuff that we just said, mm -hmm. that's his knowledge of it. So he has no direct Relative knowledge limited. of the arcane actually boarding the, uh, the spell gemmer at any point? He, or he, he's, he, he's not aware of that, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. he, he does say that it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like maybe like you know, 20, 30, 40,000 years ago, he doesn't know. But, but he thinks that's an interesting hypothesis that maybe... They developed the technology because they had found the ship at one point, but he does he doesn't know. Hmm. But to his knowledge, they developed the spell jamming technology themselves. Correct. Correct. Okay. To his Not knowledge, they developed it on their own. Okay. That's 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 the point I was, the part I was trying to get to. Yes. Yes. Okay. That is correct. Hmm. Hmm. Ha, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we're going to start getting into some wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff here. <laughs> well, or, or dimensional stuff, maybe we were mm -hmm. led here because there's another portal somewhere to get directly there. I'm trying to think of what this reminds me so, of. We were so, led here because the ship wants us here for some reason. Who knows? So, Naman says to you, um, I, he looks to you, Strax, and he says, I understand that you, that you hit it for safety reasons. Was it, was it still giving you a bearing? within the city before you hid that? I don't know if we know. I didn't actually check before hiding it. You, 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 you know it was. It was. It was. Okay, I, I didn't, I would, it would have been obvious. It would have been obvious too, yes. So yes. Then, it, it, it was still maintaining a bearing. Um, yeah, it was pointing... Where's north in this place? You, you point in a certain direction. And it was kind fine. of that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says, he turns to Galmore and he says... Would you be willing to go with them and follow the the leadings of the, of the of this device and 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 report back to me and let me know what you find? I mean, obviously this guy's working, so he can't leave. Mm -hmm. um, and and Galmore says he kind of turns to all of you and kind of looks at you and he's like, "If you will allow me to go with you, then." And he looks back at Naman and he says, "I will if if they are okay with it." Did, did, Apparently that's not my decision to make, so whatever. Did Galmore already <laughs> convey to him our concern about the other parties pursuing this object and the spelljammer? Uh, we'll, we'll say yes. Sure, why not? We'll, we'll, we'll say that he explained that. In okay, that, in that I just process. want to... Arvine would speak up about it if mm. she didn't already watch him. Yeah, we'll, 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 say that, so. we'll say that Galmore covered that. Okay. And what happened to the people that were trailing us? Um... They didn't come in the building. They did not come into the building. No, they did not come in the building. Nope. Hmm. Okay. And are they still around? Do you want to go outside and look? Mm -hmm. he steps out. I think, well... I'll make a perception check. <laughs> perception! 
Uh, let's see, perception. In the time since the arcane have come down here, do your people typically leave the dome? Passive is higher. What's your passive? 13. 13. Uh, you don't see them. What was your question again, Sarah? Sorry. In the time since the arcane have fled to the dome, do people typically, do, do the arcane typically come and go? Or do they typically stay put? Are you asking Galmar or Naman? Yeah, G- either, either or. Okay. Um, Maybe Naman. He seems to know more about the history. Okay. Um, he says, we have developed we have developed a certain kind of technology that is unheard of in the galaxy that we guard um, very it's very secretive that allows us to travel in a manner unknown and arcane do come and go from here but not by any means that you would ever know is it made out of metal? no (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you, you don't need to have an insight to see that he's obviously trying to guard a very important secret, mm-hmm. something about their culture. I wonder if it's similar to the things that the Oracle told us about the Spelljammer. It transports, like, beam me up Scotty. Yeah. Beam me up Scotty, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's not trying to hide the fact that he's trying to hide. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, sensitive well, topics. Yes, yes. S- s- sensitive topics. says yeah. that about the spell jammer, and that's all she says, because she's not going to reveal what That's, that's on a need-to-know <laughs> basis, and you don't need to know. <laughs> it might be the same thing. I, I guess, do we go and... I would say we, we go and, and have Galmar continue to escort us and see you where where, where the artifact too. wants to lead us. Yeah, the escort's not a bad idea, I guess. And if we still have our uh, visitors that were tailing us. The others, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm more worried about the visitors that might show up through the portal where we came from. Naman says, um, um, I, I, I'm very excited to learn what you find, so I, I, I will be here for the remainder of the day. And, and Galmar says, uh, thank you very much for your time. Mm-hmm. And then kind of yes, turns turn to go. You, you all follow him out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you all go go, go back outside. A little hammer should should have popped up <laughs> when we came when he came into view. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you, as you're coming to the door, the little little hammer dude um, comes out with a bag of holding. Mm-hmm. Um, you can you, carry it for a while. It's, I'm tired. You're gonna let the construct carry it. It lasts for an hour. Okay. Might as well. Okay. You're probably in there for like 15 minutes. Okay. Um, Shaking my head. As, as, we come, as we're coming out of the door, uh, yeah. I hang back and I grab my brother by the back of the shirt. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. What and I kind of square up nose to nose with him, which is hard because he's a lot taller than me and I'm pretty tiny. Nose to chest. Nose to chest. And I go, if you pull anything like that again, you're going to find out what I'm like when I don't stand up for my family and I do out you in front of a council member. I just pat her on the head say, hey, trust your brother. And keep going. <laughs> I cast Mind Sliver on him. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Is it a saving throw or something? Or? Intelligent saving throw. Oh my. <laughs> this is high stat. Yeah. <laughs> we have infighting. 23. Okay, Ooh. he passed. <laughs> well done, sir. <clears throat> well done. I'm going to assume that she's done this to you before, so you feel the intent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still do have to. Definitely. No, it's a, it's it's a, a cantrip. Can. No. No. You enough. definitely feel the attempt. And, and you know she's head. not joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else can we do? <laughs> it's, it's like an angry teddy bear. Yeah. Yeah. Continue to look for a bit and see what we learn. You know, we will need to rest at some point later. And, but and just be mindful. And as she lets go of you, she punches you right in the astrolabe that's in your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and she keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> what were we saying, Greg? I was saying that um, we should also be on the lookout for our. our Followers, yeah, yeah, RV, yeah, yeah. RV very much is <laughs> okay. So, so <laughs> I hope uh, that hurt. <laughs> Galmore sees the construct and says, "That is uh, very interesting." Um, Cute, you, isn't he? You, you made this, yeah. <laughs> mm, that is that is very interesting. It's slightly 
less complex than the ones that we have constructed, <laughs> but... <laughs> he just called you simple. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you forget about me. Well, I can do better if I have more oh, time and God, materials. My, my laugh is... <laughs> <laughs> in my head, in my head, I was like, he would try to avoid the word primitive. Yes, <laughs> so I, was like, I was trying to find another way to say it's it. only a third level spell. You <laughs> um, could have said elementary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so he continues to lead you through the streets, and he's basically he, he brings you outside, and he goes like maybe like a block away, and he turns to you and. Basically, he says, um, we need the astrolabe to give us a bearing. All right. I got the astrolabe out of the bag. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, you have to do another <laughs> sleight of hand for that? No. 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 <laughs> Unless you're trying to stop everybody from seeing you pull out of your, your jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, so you hold the astrolabe, and basically it, it orients itself and is pointing in a certain direction. So, mm-hmm. so the group of you together... Start to move in that direction. That way! To the lake! The plane, boss, the plane. The plane, the plane. That way to the lake. So, Arvin, you, you do notice the, the pair of armored arcane following. They're, they're, like, they're, like, they're like 70 feet behind you, uh-huh. um, but, 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 they're, but they're following you. Arvin kind of quietly says, so his tracks are, our friends are back. Mm-hmm. Do you think you could help determine if they are what they look like they should be? Well, if I got a little time to polish up my monocle, I think. What do you want to? What are you? What are you casting? Um, or uh, I, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> um, I'm going to attempt to ritual cast uh, detect magic. If so, if we're walking for ten minutes, um, they're under an illusion spell. In theory, that would yeah, show, yeah. right? Yeah, the idea being is I can look to see what's magical. It's probably going to be most everything here. But if I focus on them, I can see what magic is, um, what magic they are radiating. And if it's uh, illusion magic, then I'll know there's a problem. Okay. Um, following the astrolabe, you can, you can cast while you're walking. Okay. And... Um, We're walking. Yeah. You, 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 you walk more than 10 minutes, mm-hmm. so you finish the spell. Mm-hmm. And you do sense a presence of magic all around you. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the range on it? Uh, 30 feet. 30 feet, okay. So they're still like 70 feet behind you. Okay. So just Fall kind back. of stop. Yeah, kind of stop and take a little break. You just kind of okay. pretend I'm like being odd. Okay, the they, they seem to stop me. and maintain that distance. <laughs> oh, that sucks. They're <laughs> smart. Mm. So. They just start kind of like having a conversation and they're kind of... The eyeballs keep glancing over to you as they sit there and they talk to one another. Mm. Katie, what's the range on your spell that would hold people where they are? Mm. Uh, oh. oh, you say you think I'm being uh... <laughs> in case it becomes relevant. Okay, I'm not sixty this is feet. Definitely, what we do. Yeah. That's close. Hold person sixty feet. I can get up to two people. Close. <laughs> if I cast I it third level, I can do two at once. I suddenly find myself fascinated by a construct that is walking back the way we came a little bit. Mm. <laughs> okay, I mean, are you guys moving together back I toward? Mean, I mean, Arvin kind of I just sidles kinda, in by Galmar. They, they can wait for so yeah. we, we still have the same two friends following us who were following us before. I, I see. We're trying to determine if they're actually Janie does a series of cartwheels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Down the street in the way that we just came for about, you know, 15 feet. Okay. Uh, and as she comes out of them, which would put me about 60 sure, feet from them, sure. uh, she casts a third level person on the, those two guys. Okay. And you call what's, what's me the Rash. <laughs> that would be I'm a wisdom saving it. throw, which is probably a good stat for them, but we'll try it anyway. <laughs> uh, what's the DC? 18. 18, okay. Yeah. Hey, you're the one who didn't want me to start anything. Okay. Whatever. Um, it's not like I can stop her. Okay, so 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 you cast the spell, and they're obviously feigning in conversation with one another, and then they just they both kind of stop moving. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Nice. Irving <laughs> well kind of done. watches this happen and looks at Galmar's as well. <laughs> and well perhaps we should we should hurry along our way then. <laughs> and Matisse busts oh, out laughing. 
Mm-hmm. And says, well, well, it's already feet. up and running, so we yeah, might as well. While they're held, mm-hmm. you might as well look and see if they have illusion magic on them. And then Matisse mm-hmm. says, um, well done, Janie. You, you detect magic f- from them, but um, it is not illusion magic. It is not illusion magic. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's indeterminate. It, it's indeterminate, yes. Okay, which, which is a valid reason. Yeah. This means are, it doesn't fall under any particular school. Are they only held while you stay within range of them? It's up. Yeah. It's concentration up to a minute. Right, but do you, they have to stay within 60 feet for you to hold them? Not usually. Uh, I, I don't know if... if I, I don't know how that works exactly. It doesn't say... No, us, usually it's just for it the initial It does say cast. at the end of each turn they can make another wisdom saving throw, but... Right, I mean, I mean that might... That might hasten your pace a little bit then. Right. To yeah. try to hurry up. But yeah. okay. I, I would say, say let's I just mean, hurry. She has them frozen. Well, I'd okay. love to find out if they were under. They tried. But, but you said it was an illusion magic. Okay. All right, so I made another save while you were doing the detect magic. Um, they're still standing there frozen. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So so Galmore kind of quickens his pace a little bit. Okay. And uh, he. Uh, He's still trying to calm people as he goes, but because he feels a little more urgency right now, mm-hmm. he's he's doing it much quicker and just they're, they're, just they're picking up just just, just with like some hand gestures and whatnot. And he's like, you know, it's fine, everything's fine, you know. And he kind of hastes things along a little bit. Um, people are you're getting a little bit more rubbernecking than before because he's not taking quite as much time as he was to calm everybody down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but nobody's being aggressive. Nobody seems hostile. Um, so I can so, use my prejudice. Predis- Press the digitation. I never going to say that word. <laughs> to like make little like cute sparks and fireworks and things as we go if it like impresses people and maybe makes them be like, ooh, ah. You know. um, people, again, they are a largely magical race and they find that to be interesting. People kind of point and smile. Some, some are a little bit more. Oh, my three year old can do that. <laughs> <laughs> my six month old can do that. Because I can use it to do like a shower of sparks and puffs of wind and things. Okay. Like, make little music notes and like, she'll be quirky and weird. Okay. You know, they'll probably find that endearing. Cute, endearing. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so at this point, Galmore starts to basically take a bunch of turns. Yeah. Even though the Ashley was pointing in a certain direction, mm-hmm. he starts to veer on all these different paths. Arvin was about mm-hmm. to ask him if he could do yeah. yeah. that, too. Yeah. Um, good, good so so he, he does that, and he, and he gets you around, and eventually you basically you follow the Ashley to what looks to be a dead-end alley. Um, yeah. Arvin, you don't see the two people that that Janie had held. Okay. Um, you feel pretty accurate that... that that they were stuck there for at least long enough for you to get away. <laughs> um, and so, so Galmore... I <laughs> might be the best call I've ever heard, though. I just find it completely hilarious. Is that enough she... flair for some inspiration? <laughs> sure, sure. Take, take, take inspiration for that. <laughs> I just find it completely hilarious that she was just getting all on my case about making enemies... And then she goes and runs off and starts freezing people. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, Jane, Good girl. With, with all of her flashes, I paralyzed them. And she's still more subtle than you. <laughs> I'm not trying to be subtle. I'm trying to be safe. There's yeah, a difference. That's the point, Strax. <laughs> is that she does it subtly. Actually, that's the sad part, is he was trying to be subtle. <laughs> <laughs> Tracks. But it was more. Tracks is not subtle. It was more theatrical <laughs> than it needed to be. Oh no! Oh, oh, the sound's broken. <laughs> John's, turning John's like, this is subtle for me. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Uh, just wait until I actually start playing a real rogue. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the actually, it's basically, it's pointing down this dead end alley. Mm. Well, I think we can bust down a wall if we need to. Yeah, let's um, search and see if there's a fake wall before we bust. That takes time. Huh? I mean, so, so you basically, so Strax, you get within a couple of feet of the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see another door that's 12 feet tall by 6 feet wide. It's, uh-huh. it's, it's like a black portal that just kind of opens up on the wall. Mm. You don't see anything inside. There's no light source. It's just well, like it's 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 just The tree black. might have been like a portal, too. Hmm. Mm. One could hope. Uh, 
I wonder if I'll get to fight my shadow self again. This will be cool. Stress. Oh, dear. So, is, it's dark as far as we It's dark, know? yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. RV and but lights. But I have it, dark vision. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the light stops at that okay. plane. RV and lights her sword just in case it's his show. Yeah, not all of us have dark vision things. Okay. So, so, so the light doesn't penetrate into the doorway. Okay. Well, just in case we sure. have a chance sure, sure. So, uh, and she looks to Galmore and says thank you for helping us to lose them um, are you coming with us if, oh. if it's alright with you I'm very yeah. curious of where, okay. where this goes how long has it been how long been walking? Curiosities. you've been walking about 20 minutes okay hey little hammer dude go in there wait about 10 seconds and come back oh dear okay um, the construct, uh, your little walking hammer, yep. <laughs> uh, walks hammer walks through. About ten, ten, second, uh, ten seconds later, walks back out. Well, nothing will immediately kill us. Any is going to jump on us anyway. Covered in blood. No. Covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it only has ten hit points. So uh, <laughs> if anything kind of sneezes on it. <laughs> right. Okay. So we go through. So you go yeah. through. Okay. Okay, so you're all going through this door. Mm-hmm. Into the darkness. <laughs> what happened to, yeah, Chris is doing the music. It's like, it's quiet. It's strangely quiet. Too quiet. Right? Bringing in the string section. Which means danger. Slash okay. fighting. So you step through the door. And basically it's like this big open space where you don't see any walls. Everything is just black. Um, But there is some kind of ambient light which allows you to see about 60 feet ahead of you there is a gargantuan construct of some kind. And uh, it appears to be standing in front of a... um, Arcane-sized door, just like the ones that you've <laughs> been using, that the, mm-hmm. that the astrolabe creates. It's about it's about twelve feet tall, about six feet wide, and there's this gargantuan construct standing there, and you can see the door behind you that you just came in, mm-hmm. and you can see the construct and the door that's behind the construct, and everything else around you is black, but there is some kind of ambient light that allows you to basically see what looks like a marble floor in front of you. Mm-hmm. But everything it's a little bit a little bit dim in here. But again, you can see all the way across the chamber to where this construct is. Mm-hmm. And, is the, and that is what you see. Is the light on Arvian's sword working in here? Uh yes. Yes it is. So it is brighter around your immediate area. Okay. Yes. Does the door close after we walk inside together? Uh, once Strax gets us gets the ash of a certain about six feet from the door. The door closes. Can you reopen the door back where we came from? Might be a good idea. I'll give it a try. You step back toward where the door was. Mm-hmm. It reopens. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Back to my inventory here. What else have I got here hanging about? And, and, and you can see the end of the alley yeah. looking through the door. It probably isn't a bad idea that we let the door be closed in case we have any stragglers following us still. I mean, it will be closed unless you just sit the Ashley on the floor <laughs> next to it and I leave mean, it there. Might want to, he might be setting a beacon just like we did mm-hmm. when we first came yeah, in. That I reach in my, our yeah, side of the door. Yeah, I reach in my pocket and I pull out a tiefling horn. Okay. I've still got 12 of those <laughs> in my pocket. Way back then. Also. <laughs> tiefling horn, okay. Mm-hmm. And I um, kind of tinker with it a little bit, add a little few bits and bobs, and it starts making that little pinging noise. Okay. And I go and I set it over by the door. Okay. So that when you walk away and it disappears, you can basically go back I still and know find the door. Know okay. Came from. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. You set up your little artificer beacon? Mm-hmm. Galmore and say this, this construct, is this something you're familiar with? <clears throat> um, you see, he's kind of lost in thought and like amazement for a moment and he catches attention and he says um I'm sorry what 
this this construct between us and possibly another doorway we need to go through or is this something you're familiar with is this a type of guardian used by your people or something like this it it is very similar it is it is custom made i would say mm. by someone of our race but it, it is very similar it does look like one of our guardian constructs but it is um large larger than what i'm used to seeing does it appear to be deactivated or do you think this is something it, where if we go close to it it may it, it will it will activate once you get within depending on the creator specifications once you get close enough to it it will activate can these creatures be reasoned with again it Const- it, it it really depends on how the creator has set it up it could it could attack on as soon as someone gets within a certain range, it could perhaps uh, communicate. It could have some kind of a, a mechanism or a device used to allow passage. It really depends on the person who created it. I, I mean, I would you know any standard command words that might be used? There are some more common ones that I could I could try them. We could try it. Do you have any advice for how to fight one if it comes to that? And are, are you okay with us potentially destroying it if we're forced to? I would be relying on all of you to save my life if that attacked. <laughs> so you can do whatever you feel is necessary to ensure our safety. Right. We would protect your life with all right. ours. Well, that is appreciated. Let's go talk to the rock. <laughs> See if we can. Okay, so so you move up mm-hmm. to this to this creature, um, and you get within ten feet of it, and it's uh, it's basically it kind of looks like an iron golem, where the entire thing seems to be constructed of steel, and it has a a very large sword, and it has sort of like a faceplate, which is sort of like um, what you would think of a stereotypical uh, suit of armor to have. Where it has it has like a slit that goes across the front where the eyes are. So what you're saying is it's made out of metal. Yes, it is made out of metal. <laughs> it is definitely made out of metal. You're gonna heal it some more extracts. Probably. Uh, and <laughs> stop trying to throttle me in absentia. Fair. Fair. When you get within ten feet, like that slit, it lights up red. And then it collapses into a point that starts going back and forth, kind of like the Knight Rider car. Silence. And, and it's moving back and forth, and you hear all these mechanical things turning and cranking and. Hey, GH88. Irving kind of fans you know out what to they the say? side. <laughs> GH88's ice cream says no. Nope. <laughs> I thought we broke GH88. That a T should fan out to the side. Oh. Yeah. Can I cast Don't greater keep the invisibility party. on. Giamatti or whatever his um, name is. Galmore? Galmore yeah. before all this happens. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> sure. To so, protect him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna cast greater invisibility on him. Okay. So slight recon. Yeah. Jane, Janie cast that on him. I meant to say it, but my no, th- that's mouth fine. was full of cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's more than happy to accept it. Uh, Just don't engage. Engage in anything. And they won't be able to see you. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Okay. Although <laughs> <laughs> well, with greater, he actually could. Well, you just have to hope this it thing stays up until you. True, but but he hits on. He's obviously not a fighter. I mean, right. Yeah. I just try to make it so that the thing doesn't know where he is. As yeah. this thing is starting to activate, Arvin is having Matisse, and she is fanning around to the sides so that the group isn't grouped all together for. I was having seen constructs recently that had area effects that were cones and Probably stuff not like about that. Idea. So, um, yeah. so you hear the cranking and, and the gears and everything moving, and like the different plates of its armor and everything shift, and it kind of goes from almost like this kind of crouched guard position to like standing up straight, and uh, you hear this voice come out of it, and it it seems to be directed at you, Strax. Um, well, the fin. Yeah. <laughs> and it says, "Let him to the top." 
Now you can talk. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. It says, Greetings, Joran. Please speak the pass phrase. Give me two seconds. That name sounds familiar. Mm. You have 30 seconds gonna use the to speak the passphrase. Pass I'm checking my notes. Well, he can still talk in, even yeah. if he's invisible. Yeah. So, John, you actually okay. you actually have 30 seconds here <laughs> to oh. speak the passphrase. I, 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 did the name sound familiar, <laughs> but it wasn't Jorn, it was Maloran. Okay. You, so. You've never heard this name. Okay. I mean, it's kind of uh, so. Galmore, you have do 20 you have any phrases tracks could try? Um, Galmore starts saying, um, basic like, you know, cease, desist. He, he starts saying all these commands, and nothing seems to be working. <laughs> he says, uh, it, it's something specific to the creator. Jorn. Jorn. You have ten seconds. <laughs> Jorel. Uh, says spell jammer. I'd like to make a quick intelligence. Please uh, speak 18 the se- passphrase. Eighteen intelligence check for a clue. I don't suppose I know. You have not complied. <laughs> Say creator. Prepare to die. Uh-huh. All right, well, <laughs> that was going to happen. I like it this way anyway better. <laughs> it starts stepping forward towards Strax with its sword ready. Okay. Well then, <laughs> I cast magic missile. <laughs> <laughs> well, see if, we can run pa- see if we can run past him to the door. No, I want to take this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just doing a time check here. This is probably a good place to stop. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, dun, 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 to be continued. <laughs> I mean, fight probably easily take an hour and a half. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, okay, so, hmm, I was going to have you guys go to 16th level <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this. We could fight the thing. Um, I mean, I, I, can, I can redo the encounter if you want to level so that it matches or we can just have the fight and then you can level after. I'll give I'll give the choice to all of you. Would you rather level now and I'll modify the encounter or would you rather stay this level and fight it and then you can become 16th level after? Mm, see if I get anything fancy. <laughs> I'd probably vote for leveling but I got an ability score increase for a feat I, so. <laughs> we, well... I mean, it's it a, I know useful. we're both getting ability yeah. score increases. I don't know yeah. about him. It, it doesn't matter is. to me either way. I, I can do it either way. He probably is. I know he gets um, his fourth level spells. Not, well, not necessarily, because this more... is a dip fighter for a few levels. So. Come on. It's creepy music. Work with me here. This is, this is <laughs> very you much said like you dipped fighter as far as belongs in a haunted yeah. house music. <laughs> True. So I'm going up the I was thinking it was, it was like in Poltergeist or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, got you fourth level. Yeah, I think it's the... I have a mysterious folder. Uh, yeah, it does get me. I was trying to see spell, what, so. what I would do. Nine and sanctum. <laughs> if I chose <laughs> a feat. <laughs> the feet, the That's feet. That's pretty much all I get. Oh, and my... I like my feet. Proficiency goes up. So, so Sarah, do you, what is your vote? Do you want to level now or level after the fight? I, I could go either way. <laughs> Kate, do you have a vote? I'd, I'd say now because it's easier to level now than in the middle of an adventure the next time. John, do you have a vote? Uh, stick to the schedule. Say what now? Stick to the he schedule. Says now. Now? Okay. <laughs> Greg? Now it seems fine. Okay. Why don't you all roll your hit points and we'll do that before we sign off? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so everybody is 16th level? Yay, <laughs> <laughs> All right, manage character and levels. Sarah, do you want to roll? We'll, we'll go around the table. We'll have you roll first. Uh, yes, I was, I was trying to remember what hit dice I roll. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think I'd figure this out by now. What is Russell? Is it D8? Yeah, uh, D6. D6, okay. I rolled average. <laughs> you rolled average? Uh, okay, yep, so you get four. But, well, we if you roll under average, we take average. Correct. So. Yeah, Sarah rolled the three, so, she, so she's going to get the average, which is four. Which is okay. four. Uh, Kate, right, what, what level are you doing? Are you Arby's fighter or rogue? She's taking level eight of rogue. Level eight of rogue, yeah. okay. So she's going to roll her D8. Okay. Uh, she got a seven. Seven, that's pretty good. So that's pretty sweet. All right. John, are you taking level in fighter? I am go- I am taking a level in artificer. I've got artificer. what I want out of fighter. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> 
I'm a builder, not a fighter. And I also got a seven. Look at that. Nice. <clears throat> Greg is playing a paladin straight up, so go ahead and... Was it a d10? Yes. Okay, go for it. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Don't throw oh, the die out of your I face. Know where it went. <laughs> oh, wait. It's by Sarah. Oh. oh. Very My, dexterous toes. I don't have dexterous toes. That's the problem. <laughs> do you want to use another die, Greg? He's like, no. I mean, it, it could be your hit point die. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. I got it. Now it smells like my feet. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe you should use another die. So Greg rolled a two, so he's going to get the average, which is uh, six. Okay, let me just hit spot. Okay, so All right. that goes to... Well, that gets me up to 126 hit points. 119. 126 for the Artificer Fighter. And what are you at, Greg? One forty-nine. It looks yes. like for the paladin. Jane, what are you at? One forty-five for the sorcerer that took tough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because crunchy. <laughs> what is our at? One fifty-seven. One fifty-seven. All right. Sixteen. Cool. Well, with that, let's say good night to the listeners. Bye. 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 If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Our social media links, plus additional content, can be found on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay, and adventuring podcast, and spread the word through social media. Your help and support are greatly appreciated. 